our fellow members of Nights on Bikes and to bikers everywhere. My name is Bear Wozniak of the EWTN Long Ride Home TV series. Fellow Nights on Bikes member Peter Morton and I put this series of biker safety videos together for you at the inspiration of Ace Fagan, the president of Nights on Bikes USA. Peter is a certified safety instructor with both the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and Harley Davidson. So please feel free to share these videos with everyone. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com, the home of Long Ride Home TV, and consider becoming a Patreon donor and help us produce the TV show. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show and you get all seasons past to all of the episodes of Long Ride Home, plus you get early access to every new episode as soon as we produce it, months before it's released. Once so again, thank you for watching our safety videos. Welcome to Between Two Bikes with your incredible stars, Peter Morton, who is a motorcycle safety teacher. He's with the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and also certified with Harley Davidson uh, for their safety courses. And he's taught over 500 safety courses. And, you know, I love to ride motorcycles, but um, the more I listen to Peter, the more I realize I didn't know what I didn't know. And today we're going to talk about that 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 safety uh, checklist kind of thing you do before you before you do the ride, I'm, I, I'm the type of guy who goes out to the garage, kickstands up, and starts the engine, and is gone. Uh, but I know, like when I, when you skydive, there's certain things you do. First of all, you look at the guy, the hippie guy who smokes marijuana, who just packed your chute, and you realize you should go maybe check on your chute yourself. There's certain there's certain checklists you go through. And when you when I when I pilot a plane, I know I go through. There's this whole list of things that I go through to make sure that the plane is ready, to make sure I am ready, to make sure the conditions are right for me to even fly. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, right, Peter? Yes, we are. As a matter of fact, it's good timing because tomorrow we're going on the Nights on Bikes Rosary Run, uh, which we what we do is we're going to uh, meet, I'll meet the local uh, chapter in Georgia. It's going to meet at, a, at one church and we'll go to several other churches and each church that we stop by, we'll say that to the rosary. And, that's so uh, cool. Uh, that the brothers present are for. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow. So it'd probably be a real good idea for me to check out my bike that I'm going to ride. So we make sure that the rosary run, we don't have any issues. So All right. Gonna, so what are you going to do? What are you going to lead? What are you going to show us? What's the first thing? Is there any sort of acronym? You always have these acronyms that you use. I always have an acronym. The acronym is T-Clocks. And it's T C L O C S, and I'm going to add a P for a prayer at the end. Can you spell that so again? I don't spell that good. T T C L O C S. What okay. that is, you can go on the uh, msf-usa.org website and uh, drill down there, look in the library, and you'll find a T clock sheet, which I have right here, which is a, a detailed T clock sheet. Now, what I do on the details is actually I do two kinds of uh, T clocks. One is the a regular T-clock that I do, which is kind of an abbreviated version. And the other is the long version, uh, which I do when I wash the bike, because I'm touching every part anyway. So I'm going to touch all the parts that are on the list. But the most important thing on a T-clock, uh, which is why it begins with a T, is the tires. And the most overlooked thing is, is the tires. And most overlooked thing in tires is the tire pressure. And a lot of people uh, are, have that car mentality, and they're thinking, uh, well, you know, I really don't have to worry too much about tire pressure and that kind of thing. Well, car tires, motorcycle tires, a lot different. And the motorcycle tires are subject to a lot of different things. They're subject to uh, air temperature, atmospheric conditions, elevation, all of that. And just sitting in the garage, because tires sit longer than you do in a car. You use your car probably pretty much every day. And they're not do that in a motorcycle. They'll, the tire pressure will fluctuate usually down. So it's really important <clears throat> to have a good tire pressure gauge. This is the one I use. Now, a lot of you have a, uh, a uh, pencil kind of tire pressure gauge, and that's fine. Uh, but go to the auto parts store, spend a couple extra dollars, and get a good one that's going to be consistent because the, the pencil kind that, that has the little rod that shoots out, uh, if you get some debris or something in there, 
uh, it's going to give you a, a, a not an a accurate reading as it could. So invest in a, you know, spend 10, 15, $25 and, and get a good one and do that. Now on this Harley here is another accessory that I have. It's hard to get into the, uh, this piece here onto the valve stem. And Harley has come up with a nice little uh, um, accessory here, which is just an extension. This actually clips onto the valve stem, and then you have this hose that comes in, and you can take your tire pressure that way. So Beautiful. That's a, a, that's a wonderful accessory that, that uh, Harley came up with. And I use this on all my motorcycles. So that's some of the things. So how do you know what, how much air pressure to put in your tire? Very good question, Baron. Glad you asked. <laughs> The, what you need to do is check with your owner's manual. Don't necessarily rely on what's on the sidewall. That's the maximum air pressure for that tire. Don't exceed that. What you need to do is marry up the motorcycle to the tire. And usually it's going to be considerably less than maximum pressure. And you'll have in your owner's manual, you're going to have a range of pressure. And because uh, sometimes you ride with a passenger, sometimes you don't. So you're going to need more air pressure, particularly in the back wheel, if you're carrying the passenger, then if not. Hmm. So look at the range and see where you're at uh, and adjust tire pressure accordingly. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty much for the, uh, um, for the, um, T for the, uh, tire pressure. Okay. The T for T clock <laughs> tires. Cause I got to I'm losing my battery. Sorry. But Josh, the wonderful editor that he is, I'm sure can edit this part out. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll leave it in. And maybe okay. not. Okay, so that's pretty much it for tires. Uh, the pressure is the most important thing. You want to check the tread, of course, and you'll know whether it's uh, um, the tread is good or not, whether you need new tires. Uh, there's lots of different ways of doing that, tread depth gauge, or just take a look at it, and you'll see if the wear bars are worn down. Also, if you have spoke wheels like I do on this one, you want to check each spoke. The easiest way to do that, take a wrench, hit it a little bit. If it's got a nice ping to it, you know that those spokes are real good. If it doesn't, if it gets a thud, then you probably need to um, you probably need to tighten those uh, spokes up. So that's pretty much it on the tires. Uh, pretty easy. The next, on the, let's go back to the T-clocks. The next uh, letter is C on the uh, T-clock sheet, and that is controls. Now, you have a lot of controls on a motorcycle that you uh, are, are different on a motorcycle than they are on cars. And the, uh, the uh, first thing that you want to do is check the, check the um, uh, handlebars, make sure that everything is good there, uh, make sure that they're straight, uh, take a good look at them, make sure nothing's happened. You want to take a look at the uh, condition of all that, uh, make sure everything is is uh, lubricated, make sure your cables are good, make sure they're lubricated, uh, make sure that the any hoses, that nothing is obstructed, nothing hitting, uh, you know, moving around. The other thing that you want to take a look at is the throttle. Now, the throttle is, you'll see this one here, I've got a throttle assist on it. it it's spring-loaded and comes back. Now, that's important to check that every now and then, make sure that, that the spring is working properly. And that's pretty much it for controls. The lights and electricals, what you want to check uh, is make sure that all your lights are working. How do you do that? Well, duh. Turn the motorcycle on, check, make sure that all the lights are working, check, make sure that uh, in all 50 states, the headlight has to be on at all times. It has to be illuminated at all times. Um, so make sure that that's working. Make sure your tail lights are working. What I do is I'll uh, check, check out the brakes, make sure the brake light is engaging. I'll put my hand back there. Uh, I don't think you can see it, but I'll put my hand back there and I'll make sure that this working. I'll check out the blinkers, make sure they're working front and back, and make sure, so all the lights that are, are working. So that's the uh, that's the controls. That's the lighting, uh, lighting and electric uh, battery is the most important thing in that topic. And the, in the uh, that's the L lights and electrics, and make sure that the the battery is good. The easiest way to make sure that you have a good battery, you don't have any experience in that in battery. Hey, too. Peter, you know, when I was with Peter at doing the, the, we were running up to Lansing for the last nights on bikes thing they had there, and I was filming Long Ride Home, I kept having problems with my lithium battery with my with my motorcycle, and uh, which is crazy, right? 
And guess what? Guess what happened today, Peter? Go to start the car. Go to start my my little Cherokee here in Waikiki. Not wouldn't start yesterday, so I so I I you know I trickle charged it all night. Started it, and uh, and uh, turned it off. And then when I took the trickle charge off, it wouldn't start. So then I had to power start it. I, I spent in Hawaii. It's not easy. I had to go to three different uh, auto places to find something that had a battery like mine, and I had to leave it there for five hours before they could replace it. So. Um, yeah, so don't talk to me about batteries. I, I just got the, the the phone call before we started that my my car my Cherokee is ready for me to pick up. You can't even walk <laughs> in and buy a battery. I had to take it to Firestone to get it done. So okay, yeah, so let's go. Next so time. batteries are my favorite subject apparently. Yeah, next time we get together, please don't go anywhere near my battery. <laughs> uh, what fair, fair mention, of course, is the uh, this is a uh, called a battery tender. And what this does is it just leaves a, a float charge on your battery. And I, when I'm not riding the motorcycle, I plug it up. I use uh, that exact. I use that exact one on my, on both my motorcycles, but I didn't this is, this think in Hawaii I would need to trickle charge my Cherokee. Uh, you won't have. You usually won't have any problems if you leave your battery hooked up in here. Because again, most most in, in this country, most people are using motorcycles for uh, recreation rather than um, transportation. And so the, the, the motorcycle will sit for a long period of time. That's the worst thing you can do to batteries, let's say. So leave a, leave a float charge on there. And that, that's a, a, a brand name, but there's lots of different brand names that you can get. So the battery is the most important thing on lights and electric. Uh, we already went through the other lights that we tested. Uh, check out, this is, um, uh, the other thing that you really wanna, that we overlooked a lot of times is your mirrors. Make sure your mirrors are adjusted and there actually there's no cracks or anything else. And the wiring too. There's lots of exposed wires, and uh, in over in here, there's uh, um, you know all throughout here. Make sure none of it's frayed and everything is is looking real good. The other most important thing that you want to check now we'll go to the O on T box T C L O, which is uh, oil and other fluids. Real easy to check the the oil on pretty much any motorcycle. And this is a heritage. And it's real easy. I'm just going to pull this oil dipstick up. And I'm going to check it out, and we are full. And so it's it okay to check it. Is it okay to check it before you run the engine, or do you check it when the when the bike is totally upright, or is there any special rules like that for checking the oil? I was just about to say that. Do that when the when it's upright, and you should. Some manufacturers, depending on the motorcycle, look at your own this manual. Uh, will tell you to run the motorcycle for a few minutes and let the oil settle in. Certainly do that if you just change the oil. Uh, but look at your owner's manual, and different manufacturers have little different opinions on that. I believe Harley says to run it for a few minutes before you check the oil and let it settle down for about five minutes after the oil gets a little warm. Mm. Um, but whatever your owner's manual says to do, go ahead and do that as, as common practice. Uh, but make sure that you have, um, have good oil. One of my students, as a matter of fact, uh, came back about a year later and she never, it never, she must have been sleeping on this T-clock thing when we were going over it, uh, but she never checked the oil in her bike for a year. So needless to say, that motor was toast. She, after a while, she was, um, she was running that motor dry and burned up the motor and the motorcycle had to be scrapped. So that's real important, make sure that that and the other fluids, there's three fluid reservoirs on a Harley, look at your owner's manual if you have something different but make sure that all of those fluid levels are where they should be. Another common thing about uh, um, oil and other fluids, the O part, is brake fluid. Uh, take a look at, at your brake fluid and take a look at that every now and then too because the, the brake fluid should be relatively clear. Uh, if it starts getting dark, then it's time to uh, it's probably over, overdue for a change. So take a look at those too. Th this Harley's got uh, two of them, front brake, reservoir and the rear brake one is down on the bottom here. So that's pretty much on uh, on all the other fluids. The other thing you might want to take a look at too is uh, I had a problem with this bike uh, when I first got it. There was a leak. I'd come out in the in the garage floor and I'd see a couple of spots of oil on the floor. And what that was is way back in the bowels of the motorcycle, there was a hose coming down from the um, oil tank to the oil drain plug that had a little crack in it and it was dripping oil. Now, can you imagine if that would let loose as I was going down the highway and I'd be running the motorcycle with no oil or worse yet, 
all of that oil would be thrown back on the tire, so I'd have double jeopardy there. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. make sure that uh, if you see any kind of hints that there's oil on the ground, you really want to take a, a real good look at that and find out the cause of that and fix it. By the way, that's not normal on any motorcycle. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's uh, that's the oil and other fluids, the chassis. That's the frame part. What you want to take a look at when you're washing it, particularly and shining it up, make sure everything is tight. There's uh, no cracks in the frame, that everything is, is the way it's supposed to be. Uh, shake it, make sure nothing's loose. The front forks uh, should be tight, uh, not loose. Um, and that's the suspension part. And then you also want to, on uh, part of the chassis is the, uh, the drive mechanism. Now on this bike, I have a belt. Uh, most Harleys will have a belt. So I'm going to check that and make sure everything is good there. There's no cracks. There's no um, nothing really going on there. Uh, you might have a chain. A uh, chain requires a, a little bit more maintenance uh, than any of them. So you want to keep that loop uh, with chain. There's a whole procedure. Check your owner's manual on how to do that. Clean it off first. And then uh, you have to spray it down with a chain, chain loop, not WD-40. Use real chain loop. And then the other drive mechanism that I have on my other bikes is the is a shaft drive. Uh, it's very similar to what's on your car. All that requires is that you maintain uh, drive train fluid in there, whatever whatever is required there. So check that, and that's another level to check. And uh, all the fasteners, you have a lot of fasteners that are on a motorcycle, make sure everything is tight. Because you're, you're vibrating quite a bit, make sure everything is tight and secure and, and uh, working. And the last one on T-Clocks is, uh, of course, we're talking about tires, controls, lights and electric, oil and other fluids, and chassis. We've checked that. Now you're going to check the stand. And a lot of times on a stand, a lot of motorcycles are going to have a side stand. Some of them may have a center stand, like on my um, Goldwing's got a center stand, which you can put it upright, uh, good for maintenance. But the uh, side stand, you want to make sure that there's a spring in there, that that spring is actually working. So when it comes up, it stays up. The spring keeps that uh, in place. Also on a side stand, a lot of modern motorcycles will have a uh, cutoff switch or an interrupt switch. When the side stand is down, you're not going to be able to, or when you put it in gear, then the motor will cut off. So there's a switch that actually does that. So again, check your owner's manual and make sure that um, that that's working properly. So that that's pretty much it on the uh, on the um, T clocks inspection. You want to do that. The, the now my my abbreviated one that I do is I'm going to check the important things. I'm going to check tire pressure, and I'm going to check. Now I have a uh, a tire minder on here, which is a a little uh, valve stem that tells me if it's green, then I know I've got enough pressure in there. So that gives me a quick visual to take a look at that. Um, and also I've got, um, so you want to make sure that your tire pressure is good. Um, that's what I, I do all the time, uh, both of them, front and back. And then I'm going to check the fluid levels. I'm going to make sure that the uh, oil level is good. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to do a quick visual on all my lights and make sure it's good. I'm going to turn the motor over and make sure I know what each motor sounds like. Uh, so I'm in tune with that. And then usually I'm, I'm ready to go. So that's my abbreviated version. And again, like I said, I do the long version. I do all of this that's on this list. Uh, when I when I wash the bike, I'm touching every piece anyway, so why not inspect it? Well, you know, and, and so you know, as a pilot too, we know we 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 we, we check the uh, the plane, but we also check the conditions. I'm going to do a I, living in Hawaii or in Florida where there's rain and things like that, where other people live in snow. I'm always going to check the conditions. What what the wind is going to be because it can get be kind of uh, sketchy. What the uh, is there going to be rain? Is there going to be freezing rain? So I, we, as pilots, you know, a little bit different than motorcycles. We're going to be checking the upper, you know, the upper level wind, wind, winds aloft, and things like that. So another thing, check the conditions where you are and where you're going. The other thing, Peter, is in the, in this day and age when uh, you know using uh, a lot of us have our little Google Maps thing or some sort of map thing on on the bike. Um, get that pre-programmed because there's nothing. It's pretty pretty sketchy when you're on a ride, and you don't really know the path you're on, and you're constantly checking that. You can looking down at that phone, 
can really be kind of deadly. I also, I remember when I first was flying and I had my phone and I could uh, turn on, you know, a radio station or music while I was flying. Wasn't a good idea. It became very distracting to me. If someone called me with my phone while I was flying, not a good idea. So uh, figure out what you're going to do with that phone. If you're going to use it for maps, you know, maybe disable other things on it. And just be very careful that you've kind of checked out the route ahead of time so you know in your mind what to expect. Um, and the other thing I was going to say is that as a, as, a, as a private pilot, the biggest thing is to check out myself. Am I in a condition? Am I in the right sort of condition uh, physically and uh, uh, fatigue-wise? And it's not a good idea to get on a motorcycle when you're angry, right? Things like that. So can you kind of cover checking out the conditions, checking out my own my own the the rider itself. How do what's the pre-flight check on those? Exactly. In the in the MSF training, what we want the students to ask is three questions. Are you ready? Is your bike ready? And is your gear ready? Those are the three things that you want to ask. The things they, that you're uh, gonna the things that you wear. You mean the, by by gear? Sir? Okay. Yeah. What you're wearing is that what you mean by gear? Yes. Yeah, okay. I absolutely agree with everything that you said prior to that that you do in your uh, uh, in pre-flight inspection and checking the weather and all that because you're you're in a motorcycle now. You're out in the weather, so that, that becomes important. Uh, what I do is I carry a, a rain suit with me all the time because you know, you're, I hear a lot of motorcyclists say, well, you know, I'm never going to ride in the rain, but you're going to get caught. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good, luck, good luck with that. Yeah, it's good to it's good to have a uh, some rain gear with you, and that'll keep you out of trouble. Now, the gear that's part of the gear part is my gear ready. And do you uh, wear also, chaps? I, do you wear chaps, Peter? I think we have matching chaps. I do. Uh, if that depending on the on the motorcycle and depending on the conditions, I do wear chaps. Um, I also have a pair of uh, uh, Kevlar reinforced and knee padded uh, blue jeans. There's several um, brands that that have that. Mm -hmm. uh, they look like they get the blue jeans. You wouldn't know the difference, mm -hmm. but they actually have built-in knee pads and they're Kevlar lined. Uh, that's the kind of like the bulletproof material. So if I'm sliding down the highway, then then it's not going to affect me that much. Uh, blue jeans are. It's going to take about a second or two for it to be ripped in shreds as you're sliding sliding down the highway. So whatever. It's all about how much risk you're willing to accept. And I mean, you can. You can get all kinds of different gear for all kinds of different situations, but how much risk are you willing to accept? I have a super light Kevlar jacket that's very comfortable even in the summer. It's not too hot. But, you know, one of the reasons I ride is because I like to feel the breeze and all of that. So maybe I don't maybe I don't ride as safely as, as some some think I should. But, you know, I, will ride, me, I, I wear that on longer trips, but when I'm just doing a short ride, I like to feel everything, you know. Yeah, well, that's one of the beauty parts about riding a motorcycle because you do feel all of that. You're using all five senses. Uh, yeah. You're not in a car. Uh, pretty much in a car, you're. it's mostly just sight. I mean, you're, you're looking at different things. But in a motorcycle, you're engaging all five senses. Yeah, you is, smell. You, you, you're you aware of things that you didn't even know were there because you can smell smell certain things. And let's say let's one other one other thing about uh, pre-flight checklist before we, we, we go. Um do you pray before you ride? Do I pray before I ride? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'm always asking. I'm always asking for for protection and for to make good decisions. Uh, and that that's uh, that's key, absolutely. And actually, uh, and depending on the the ride, and uh, is um, if there's a, a stretch of, of highway uh, for for me personally, I I've, I've been known. I'll, I'll say a decade or two of rotary going down the highway is that a single uh, is that a single decade raise rosary i can't quite see it in the picture yes yeah, yeah so that that's what i was going to say that's that's essential gear too <laughs> and i have uh, actually a saint benedict uh exorcism coin glued to the to my in the middle of my ga gas tank so that's part of the gear too we're gonna ride with jesus let's do that let's do the disclaimer though i'm not recommending that don't be distracted but it it, uh, it 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 may work for you, and it, it, it certainly works for me. Well, it's yeah, and I think um, the closer I got to thee, because when you ride a mo motorcycle, you're much more aware of how vulnerable you are, and your your wits must be about you. If you're going to be distracted, if you're angry, if you're thinking about other things, 
uh, that the most dangerous thing about riding a motorcycle is the rider themselves if they're not alert. And that, Pete, that's the first question. That's the first question that you, you ask. Are you ready? And that, that means just that. Uh, no impairments, uh, no drinking. You know, that's that's not a good idea. Drugs, you got to be careful. Be careful about prescription drugs, over-the-counter drugs, all that stuff. Uh, emotions have a play in it. Uh, some people ride a motorcycle to go relax and unwind. If you're not that kind of person, then don't do it. Uh, for me personally, if I hear that voice that says that this is not a good day to ride a motorcycle, I listen to that voice. I listen to that uh, too, Peter. I really do. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's really important. If you just get that sense, then then listen to that. Um, yeah, sometimes what, what, sometimes, you sometimes just get it's just not a good day to ride a motorcycle. Right, right. Also, the and other thing is, good. the other thing is, um, I remember when I was first riding. My, I first started riding motorcycles on the island of Molokai, which was great for me because it's very safe, but not probably very great for the people of Molokai, right? <laughs> <laughs> because I wasn't that good of a rider, and I had a little Rebel 250. That was my first book, my first bike, and my friend uh, um, who uh, who helped me join the Sons of Hawaii Motorcycle Club. I uh, said, "Hey, you want some? You need some sunglasses?" And I go, "No, like I didn't want to borrow with sunglasses. I didn't even think you needed glasses when you rode a bike, right? So make sure you have good quality uh, sunglasses if you're not wearing a visor, and make sure you have the ability to have uh, like." When you're riding and it's going to get close to sunset, make sure you have the clear glasses with you, too. This is Bear Wozniak. We've been talking with Peter Morton. Uh, my show, Long Ride Home TV, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, is a motorcycle-based, faith-based uh, TV show where we have our camera crew embedded with us as we ride across the United States. Uh, and, of course, Peter's wearing his Long Ride Home T-shirt, and I am, too. He's a, he's a cast member. He's been on. He's been with us when we've ridden and uh and you can find that all out, everything about that at deepadventure.com. And we're both members of Knights of Columbus, and we're both members of Knights, proud members of Knights on Bikes. And we we're, uh, want, want you to remember, this is just Peter and I talking between two bikes. You need to do your own. Uh, it's kind of, this is our disclaimer, make sure that you are fully assured of what the safe, what it takes to, to ride your motorcycle cycle safety. Until next time, this is Bear Wasik, Peter Morton. Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. Peter Morton, I want to thank you for your commitment to Jesus Christ, to the Catholic faith, to Knights on Bikes, and also to motorcycle safety and for considering some of the things that we've shared with you on our video. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com. It's the home of the EW10 Long Ride Home TV series, and we invite you to become a Patreon donor. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show, and you get an all-seasons pass to all of the episodes, as well as early access to every new episode as we produce them. EWTN provides a limited amount of funding for our TV show, so we count on donors like you to help us produce the show. Thank you once again for joining us for our safety briefing.